Hello guys, welcome to part one of Photoshop 101. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the Photoshop workspace, talk about the interface, some basic tools, the options bar, panels, and menus. Let's get started. To open Photoshop, go down to the Windows Start button, select All Programs, and drag the scroll bar to you find Adobe Master Collection CS6. Double click to open and you'll find all the different Adobe CS programs that we have to work with. This is the one that we're going to be using mainly in this class, Adobe Photoshop CS6. There's a regular version and a 64-bit. Either one works fine. Doesn't matter which one you click on. After Photoshop opens, you can either make a new document by going to File New, after Photoshop opens, you can either make a new document by going to File Menu, New, putting in the dimensions that you want for the width, the height, and the resolution, and selecting OK. Here I'm going to cancel on this window. or you could open a photo instead directly from a particular folder. In this case, we'll go to File, Open. I have my folder on the desktop. Your file will be located on the V Drive Digital Photography folder in a folder called Photoshop 101. I'll double click to open up the desktop, and on the desktop, here is the folder I'm going to go into. Double click to open. And I'm going to scroll down and find a photo. You'll be opening the same one. It's this picture right here. Guy standing in front of a lake with his back to us. And I'm going to click open. Inside of Photoshop, the photo is now open. The file name is located up at the top. And we're also looking at this at 50%. I can zoom into this with the keyboard short, shortcut control plus once 66.7% twice all the way up to 100%. I can hold down the space bar on my keyboard turns to a hand that allows me to move in so that I've made this picture much larger in terms of the percentage. I'm going to go back control minus two times to 50 percent over here along the left side are the tools that Photoshop has to work with a couple of the ones that we'll talk about real briefly the crop tool and all the way down at the bottom to let you know that there are two different colors a foreground color and a background color the default to bring to black and white is this little icon right here and this switches the foreground and background colors. These colors you could change yourself to get different colors by double clicking in this area and dragging inside of the color area and up and down the ramp to actually change the actual color itself. Click OK and that blue color is now set as a foreground color. To go back to my defaults I can simply click on this little icon and now it takes me back to black and white. Anytime you work with a tool, simply by clicking in this area on any tool, you notice the option bar right in this area keeps changing. Depending on the tool, it might change significantly or maybe just a little bit. What's happening is, for instance, on the brush, there are specific brushes different modes, opacities that I can work with for that brush. If I go to the Move tool, it has different settings I can control for the Move tool, so on and so forth for all the other tools that are available inside the Tools panel. So the Tools panel, the Options bar, different panels are located over here along the side, Color, 
swatches, so on and so forth. And the final area to look at is up at the top, the menu bar. The two things I'm going to have us do is to crop this photograph, try to get it to use the rule of thirds, which we learned about in our photography composition, and also work with one of the selections under image that are auto adjustments, auto tone, contrast, or color. First, let's take a look at the crop tool. It's very easy to use. You find a photograph that you want to compose in a different way. Simply click, hold down the mouse button, drag that to a different look. And once I have it here, I can still move it around. And we actually can see how this image is being broken down into the rule of thirds. I can still change it to get exactly the look that I'm after. We'll go something like this. Here again, that image that I want to make the focal point is now shifted over to the right hand side, hitting one of those areas that we learned about using the rule of thirds. And I'll simply click the check mark to accept that crop. The final thing we'll do is to go under the image menu and take a look at the three choices auto tone again, contrast, or color. Each of them will change an image with automatic settings and in this case this one when I click on it will adjust the tone of the image a little bit brighter in certain areas in the water I'll edit undo auto tone image auto contrast very close and similar to the look that we were just seeing undo auto contrast and one that has a little bit more different kind of a look is auto color. In this case it seems like some of the cast, the color cast of green has been removed by using this auto adjustment. That's real basic on a couple of the things inside of the Photoshop program. At this point I'm going to have you save this particular file by going to file save as we're going to navigate out of the Photoshop 101 folder go to the desktop I'll save mine to the desktop I'll have you save yours to the V Drive digital photography and inside period 2 I'll have you save it to a folder designated exercises save this one as your last name exercise one change the name and simply click save if the jpeg options come up the quality setting keep it at eight or nine mine is at eight and i'll click okay